the reason why it's better than putting money in a savings account is simply, you know, what that money is able to accomplish for you long term. You know, interest rates right now are basically near zero. And if inflation is at 2%, you're actually losing your purchasing power. You're essentially losing money over time. Joe, for someone who's new to stock investing, can you just tell us what stock investing is? At its simplest, investing in stocks is really investing in companies. When we buy stock of a company, that's called a share. And we want to buy shares of companies that we think will go up in value over time. If the value of the company goes up over time, uh, the value of our shares go up and ultimately that's how we make money and we can sell that for a profit. Now, obviously, as we all know, the alternative can happen and companies can go down in value when our investments can decrease as well. But at its fundamental, it's owning a part of a company and really with the goal of making money over time. Are there different types of stocks? So you have something like a growth stock and that's really where your chance to make money is by that, that share price growing over time time. You can see these in a lot of the software companies where, you know, they IPO at $40 and a couple of years later, they're trading at, you know, $200. Think of like a Salesforce or an Apple lately, any company like that. Then you also have, you know, what's known as a dividend stock and dividends are when, when companies pay out part of their profits to their shareholders. This is an attractive way to return investment to shareholders. You know, typically, these companies are more mature. Their share price might not, may not be as likely to go up as some of these growth stocks, but alternatively, they're you know hopefully paying a more uh, defined return that, that you can expect. Probably the third would be value stocks. Value stocks are traditionally ones that may have a little bit of hair on them, for lack of better words. Things have gone south, but new management or you know, a change in industry. People think that long-term uh, things can return to the average and like they think there's value in those buys. Can you give an example of each, like a company that represents a dividend versus growth versus value? Yeah, growth company for the past 10 years, probably like an Apple uh, or right now, probably a Tesla, just skyrocketing right now for a dividend company, Coca-Cola or Target or McDonald's, somebody like that. For a value company, you may be looking at real estate companies or healthcare or somewhere those, depending kind of where they are on the cycle. And what's the return on the stock market usually? Historically, uh, stock market has returned, you know, somewhere between 10 to 12% a year. If you adjust that for inflation, which is roughly 2%, you're looking at 8 to 10% a year. Now, Obviously, the stock market just doesn't go up 8%, 10%, 8%, 10%. It's more like up 30, up 5, down 10, up 15. So in any given year, it's probably, it's very rarely going to be at right at 10%. Uh, but, you know, if we look back 100 plus years, that's what we can typically expect. You know, I can't predict the future, but no reason to think that that's going to going to change in the foreseeable future. The reason why it's better than putting money in a savings account is simply, you know, what that money is able to accomplish for you long term. You know, interest rates right now are basically near zero, and if inflation is at two percent, you're actually you're essentially losing money over time. So yes, it might be safe, but you know, there's a risk associated with safety where you know long term you're not growing your wealth. How long is the game for stock investing? It really should be long-term. And that's 10 plus years, probably more like most of us are saving for retirement. That's probably closer to a 30-year time frame. And accordingly, you need to keep that into your perspective. One of the biggest mistakes people make when bad things happen, people sell out of their accounts. You saw it in this year, with COVID. And candidly, that might be the worst financial mistake you ever make. You are much better off just riding through the waves. And for investors in our position, you know, having a long time to needing the funds. Candidly, if the market dropped 20% tomorrow, I'm not really worried for any of us, as long as you stay the course, because we don't need the funds. So as long as you can ride it through, your accounts will go back up in value. If you do have a significant expense coming up in the next couple of years, you want to have that money safer, you know, set to the side. You don't want to have that exposed to the market. So if you're looking to buy a house in the next year or two, I wouldn't have your hundred grand down payment or more, depending on where you're living. I would not have that in the stock market. Yes, it could go up, but could you imagine if you're getting ready to close on a house in the next couple of weeks and you know you have 200 grand in the stock market and then COVID happens and you're, it drops 30% overnight. 
now you're not getting the house anymore. So it's worth it to take that risk off the table for those big purchases. So you really got to have that that step back and have that larger perspective of what you're looking to accomplish. How much money do you recommend a young professional to invest in the stock market? But I think a really good goal for investors would be to put $500 away a month. And the reason why I say $500 is because that gets you to $6,000 a year and $6,000 is the maximum amount that you could that somebody under 50 can put towards an, uh, an individual retirement account or what's more commonly referred to as an IRA. And, you know, the math on that is if you start at 22 and invest uh, $500 a month, or that's $6,000 a year, every month until 65, so that's 33 years, and you make that roughly 10% a year, that's going to grow to approximately 1.4 million just from putting away $500 a month which is pretty cool to think about. And that really comes down to just compounding interest and the time power of money. So pretty cool to think about it. 500 bucks a month. You know, most of us can find a way. And even if you can't just start, you know, maybe making that a target ultimately is really going to help you long-term. For a young professional who's kind of just getting into stock investing, what's this most simple way to get started? There, there's really two avenues you can go. There's the do-it-yourself method or work with somebody method. The do-it-yourself method, the easiest thing to do would be to open up a regular trading or brokerage account. So for younger investors, the most common one is Robinhood, and they really change the game with their zero charges on trading. But I would also really recommend looking at you know a bigger institution like a Charles Schwab or a Fidelity or Vanguard. And reason I would recommend those is they have much better security and much better customer service. It's really opening an account at one of those firms, putting money into your account, and then starting to buy companies. And so that's how you do it if you want to do it yourself. I know for a lot of people who are young and busy at work, they don't want to do that themselves after work. They don't want to look at their investments. They don't want to do research. Uh, so you can also work with somebody like us or another firm. That's how I started out. I My first year out of college, I had saved about 10 grand. And at that point, you know, I'd been a poor college kid. There was more money than I had ever seen. Not that it's a ton, but you know, I knew that sitting in my savings account, it wasn't doing anything. And interest rates then were better than they are now. So I knew my money wasn't doing anything in the bank and I knew I should invest it, but I had no idea what to invest it in, how to manage it, what was a good investment. You know, a lot of questions that we all have. And more importantly, I knew that I didn't want to spend my free time figuring it out. And so I went to actually my now business partner who was working in the financial industry even then and basically said, hey, I know I'd be like probably your smallest client, but can you hook me up as a friend? I don't know what I'm doing, but I figure you can make me money. And so I worked with him and you know, having that peace of mind and not having to think about it and knowing my money would grow long term was totally worth it to me. So those are really the, the two methods, you know, start out, work with somebody or do it yourself. Well, any other tips or final advice? I read a good article recently. It was actually about fitness, but I thought it applied really well. And he said, simple is sexy. And I think that's really hard to lose perspective for people, especially younger investors. When you read about somebody who made a million dollars overnight in the stock market, investing in some exotic company or using some crazy strategy. Yes, it's worked, but for every one of those, there's 10x the people who've done it and lost money. And I would not make that your, your long-term wealth strategy. You know, there's simple principles that if you followed over time and executed and with discipline, you will grow your money over time. Well, that's all the questions I had, Joe. Thank you so much for your time and sharing all your knowledge. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Henry.